Welcome back and thanks for being with us again. I'm Scott Boyson. I'm the marketing manager for Trace Minerals Research and with me is uh, David Butts. And we're out here today at our mineral harvesting facility once again and we want to explain to you why we are the number one selling trace mineral supplement uh, according to SPIN's data. And uh, we're out here today. It's, it's a hot day. It's August 22nd, 2011. And uh, today we kind of want to talk to you about, uh, again, the science behind our product and the science and why it is the number one selling product. David Butts has been doing solar evaporation technology. In fact, he has dedicated his whole career realistically to solar evaporation technology. In fact, uh, these papers and books that I have in my hands, corporations and even countries have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars for this information and for the science behind, uh, behind solar evaporation technology. And uh, constant flow is, is, a patent, is a patent pending process David has developed for us for Trace Minerals Research and the science behind it. In fact, David, why don't you tell us a little bit about the constant flow process? Well, as you can see here <clears throat> in the background, there are a number of ponds. In, in this instance, there are 15 different ponds. And by sequencing brine through these ponds, you can make a much faster or product much faster than you can without doing so. Some companies take o over a year, two years, three years to sequence their brines through the uh, different ponds, but if it's done properly and scientifically, it can be done in less than a month. That's, so that's, I mean, that's the science you've brought to us. Now our facility is operational between the months of May and September, and during the other months, it re essentially remains dormant. Now, David, can you explain that, why that is? Well, the months of June, July, and August are hot, and so therefore the evaporation is high. Then as we proceed towards the, the fall and winter and spring months, they're cooler, and so naturally we don't get as much evaporation. And so when we say the ponds are dormant, that really means that they slow down. Uh, and they may operate if it's a very good September and even a good October, they can still produce and still evaporate. But uh, in January, February, it's usually very cold, and so the ponds just remain dormant. Uh, they may even gain a little bit of uh, precipitation, snow and rain, uh, but then start up again in the, in the late spring. We usually think of June, July, and August about 80% of everything is made during those months, but other brines can be made even before then and a little after then. It just depends on the weather. We're out here at one of our 15 extraction points, which is within our right of entry from the state of Utah. And uh, David, can you tell us a little bit why we chose this pristine location to extract our minerals? Well, this canal has been here uh, for over 50 years, and it is a deep canal. And because of its depth, we can pick off the better brines that are underneath the Great Salt Lake. The Great Salt Lake isn't just a homogeneous uh, body of water. It actually has more concentrated brines down at the bottom. And so with this canal here, as you can see, it's wide, it is deep. We can go down to the bottom of the canal where the better brines are and put those into our solar ponds. Along with this pristine location to gather our brine, uh, we also, uh, the, the state of Utah has allowed us to run 3,500 feet of pipe, which is actually movable, so we can move uh, to each extraction point that we have tested. Now, David, I've grown up in, in this area. I've lived next to the, the Great Salt Lake. You know, when you get, a, you get a, a wind that comes from the west, can you explain it? You know, it's, there's a little odor to it. Can you explain what that is? Well, I've smelled that odor, too, ever since I've been a little kid. Yeah. All around the lake, you will, you will find uh, habitats that will give off this kind of a sulfur smell. Mm. Okay. And, uh, and it's not unique just to this lake. It's unique to most uh, areas where they have very shallow brines. Okay. Uh, but the odor, of course, doesn't affect the concentration in the brines at all. The, the smell is normal. and. Uh, uh, you can find it almost any place around the lake, uh, even up there in the north in Locomotive Springs, you'll mm. find that smell. Okay, thanks. 
We're here at our corporate offices in our executive boardroom, and uh, I'm here again with David Butts. And in front of me is basically the constant flow process. And this is obviously a very proprietary process written by David Butts. And you can see here at the bottom that he signed it and sealed it, uh, that, that this is what he's done for us. Now, the constant flow process also has part of it, a patent pending process that allows us that through the harvesting process and, co and the concentration process, we're taking out the rainwater. And we're the only dietary supplement company on the lake that has a, a process, a patent pending process like this. Now, what we want you to understand is that we don't just put the lake water in our ponds and hope we get a viable product, which is concentrates, obviously. But this is, a, this is a process that is researched and has a lot of science and mathematics behind it, of which uh, David uh, researched for us and, and does for us. Now, David, I see some graphs in front of us, and uh, I don't understand them completely, and, and I'm sure our, uh, our audience would like to know a little bit about this process, obviously not giving much away because it is proprietary, and we don't want to want to give it too much away, but can you tell us a little bit about what these graphs mean? I'd like to show you this one graph. F first mentioned that if you take the great brine from Great Salt Lake and put it into a pond until the water is evaporated, you won't make the trace minerals that we're after. Mm, the concentrates. So it, ha yeah. it has to be done in, in a particular way. Okay. This graph kind of shows the uh, concentration of, of brine as it's evaporated. So we start out here at Great Salt Lake which is very low in magnesium. So this is the, the Great Salt Lake water? Right in here, right no, in no here. No concentration. And, and okay. this represents concentrating it as we go this way. And then this shows what happens with the sodium, the sulfate, the chlorine, the potassium, okay. as it concentrates along with the magnesium. And so to concentrate from, say, 1%, magnesium to 2%, you have to remove half of the water. And to, and to get from 2 to 4, you got to remove another 50% of the water, okay. and so forth, so that by the time you get up here, you have really concentrated uh, all of the minerals that are in the Great Salt Lake. Uh, this shows the, basically a sketch of the solar pond system. Okay. And uh, ponds, see values on yeah, here. ponds one, two, and three, so forth. Okay. And the values here are the uh, density as it concentrates more and more. And we do have a density that we're shooting for. Okay. And also a concentration of magnesium that we're shooting for. And so the data is taken each day. And then uh, I'll get an email or I'll get the results of what's taken, and then by looking over that, I, I can give instructions on what needs to be done in order to optimize and get the very most that we can out of this, out of the area that we have. Right. And that, so, th by the time we get to there, then we have met the requirements and uh, what we call the specifications uh, of the trace minerals that we're after. Right. So as you can see. This process uh, is something that, that we're doing every day, and uh, it, it's why we're the number one selling trace mineral in America.